another old steam powered machine shop video. Uh, it's kind of a cold, damp, rainy day here, but it's nice and toasty warm in the shop. Uh, we've got a pretty good video for you today. Um, first thing I want to do is show you a little job that came in the shop. A uh, customer who's a logger, that job. And then uh, to get back to the steam engine, we got the uh, main bearings poured and uh, we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, I want to thank all you guys for your subscriptions. We're over 10,000 now and uh, all the great comments that uh, you've been sending in. And uh, uh, I got a little bit of viewer mail here from my friend Mike Waller who lives up the road a few miles and he has a really great uh, YouTube channel uh, British Motorcycles and right now he's doing a series and he's rebuilding a uh, single cylinder BSA from the ground up uh, to make a trials bike out of it and I call him the, uh, the live Chilton manual because he is actually putting this entire motorcycle together on the bench using, you know, just plain tools that everybody has or some special tools that he's made himself. And it's pretty interesting. I got a, I got a link on my G Plus page for it. Uh, it's Britannic Motorcycles, Mike Waller. Might be worth taking a look at. Oh, yeah. This is a reversing switch. It's a drum switch uh, with an on-off. And uh, I told him I needed one for a little atlas lathe that I'm putting together in Florida. So this will go down south with me and uh, go on that little atlas lathe. Thank you very much, Mike. Well. We can't spend a lot of time yakking, so we'll get right to the machine work. Thanks again. This is the main bearing frame of the engine. And uh, the main bearing caps, of course. Um, I'm going to remove all the babbit and re-pour these bearings. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to make a mandrel, which is sort of a dummy for the crankshaft, which will be uh, inch and three quarters, uh, somewhat smaller than the crank. And it's going to go through here and be suspended. So the center of it is the right distance from the bottom. And I'll show you how I calculate that. calculated that when I get it set up to do it. But we'll end up uh, pouring, I'm going to pour the bottom halves separate from the top and uh, then when I get it all done I'm going to bolt it together and line bore the whole thing to fit the crank. Um, the only boogaboo about that is there's a radius in here uh, on the thrust bearing. The crank just slides down in here so there's just a little bit of end play and I got to figure out with the, with the boring mill I'll put the bar through here and, and make a tool with a radius on it that will just trim and cut this this uh, radius on this edge here and then flip the tool around and come back and back it into this one and, and cut this one. And uh, The only problem I see so far is that you see there's a stepped edge on this here that drops down in there. On this one for some reason somebody had uh, Evidently, the bearing was completely worn out, and instead of re-pouring the bearing, they cut this down uh, so that it would go down in there further after they pulled all the shims out of there and, and tightened down on it. But this, this area right here has been evidently cut back, and it leaves a gap in here. Uh, so what I think I'll do, I really haven't thought this through yet, but one way I can do it is to build this up with brass, braise it up, and then indicate on these edges here, out here, and, uh, uh, and mill it flat. Probably do it in the shaper. Uh, 
Now, I've, I've already removed the Babbitt from this one and cleaned it up so you can see there, uh, when the engine was made, they just drilled a bunch of holes here on the top and the bottom by hand or whatever to kind of to anchor the Babbitt in there. The Babbitt doesn't actually have to stick to the, the part tinned out like lead. It's got uh, these holes in here which anchor it and keep it from moving around and the same in the bottom I think. I haven't got the bottom uh, out yet but uh, so I'll show you a couple ways to get Babbitt, old Babbitt out. Mm, got a variety of chisels here. As you can see, this is pretty crummy old hard Babbitt. There's no telling where it came from, and I'm almost sure it's not the original Babbitt. It's very brittle, very hard. Uh, so, I'll kind of break up. Anchor points there. And I'll have to drill these out like I did the other ones. They're stuck down in there. But that's pretty poor Babbitt. I I would never use this over again. I have on sometimes saved some of the old Babbitt and mixed it in with new Babbitt. Uh, you know, the experts will tell you not to do that, but I mean, Babbitt's pretty expensive. If it's on a line shaft or something that doesn't really matter that much, it would be fine, but I don't know what this stuff is. Well, the other thing you can do, which is a lot more fun, is to just melt it out. Most Babbitt melts at about 700 degrees. Not that it makes any difference really. But uh, the railroad got really cheap and started making it out of mostly lead. And uh, you find some of that here and there that melts at a lot lower temperature. But real Babbitt is like copper and antimony and tin. And tin got to be really expensive. So, now well, Babbitt today, you can buy it. You can buy it from McMaster Car. They got three different grades depending on the load and the speed. And I usually use the medium, the middle grade.
anyway, that's how you do it. This is the main frame of the steam engine. <clears throat> the crankshaft is carried in these bearings and the rod goes up and down through here. And we're gonna, the bearing, uh, the babbitt's been removed and I'm going to pour a new bearing, new bearing material in here. And uh, instead of using the crankshaft, uh, I'm going to use a mandrel here, which is just a piece of uh, inch and three quarter electrical conduit. And uh, I like to use a piece of tubing instead of a piece of solid stock because it's easier to heat up, to warm up uh, when you pour and it cools quicker also. So what I did here was I figured out where the center line of the crankshaft uh, would be carried here. Before I took the babbit out, I measured from what was left of the babbit down to this lower surface here and uh, uh, calculated approximately based on uh, about 30 thousandths wear, that'd be 15 thousandths on a side, uh, where the center line is. And then uh, the distance from here up to the bottom of the mandrel is calculated based on the the radius of the mandrel at uh, one and three three quarter, and the radius of the uh, crankshaft, which was two inch. So, by shimming up my little V blocks here on each side, I've got this, and I measured with a little gauge under here uh, to be just about right. So, if the crank was uh, uh, turned to down to uh, 1.950 and uh, the mandrel here is 1750 so that leaves me 200 thousandths to machine so that should be plenty to clean up now the alignment this way I just had to make an assumption I'm assuming that this these uh, notches here are parallel to the center line of the crank. They'd almost have to be because they're the parting lines for the main bearings. <clears throat> so I set this up in here and on all eight corners here they're exactly the same distance away. Here and here and here. So then I put some screws in each corner here, screwed it down to the plywood and screwed this down so it can't move around. One interesting thing about using a piece of tubing here, you have to anchor it pretty good because the babbit is so dense and heavy that it will actually float the mandrel up. So you gotta make sure you've got it stuck down. So uh, everything is pretty much lined up. Now these little washers here won't hold the babbit back and I've got some special kind of uh, uh, putty that's made for Babbitt work. It's heat resistant that I'm going to put around here to seal it up. Now, no matter how good you seal it, sometimes you get a leak. But uh, if it uh, is a problem with the pour, you just melt it out and try it again. So I'm all set here to put the putty in and when I get ready to heat it up and pour it, we'll come back. This is my setup for pouring Babbitt. Shows you you don't have to have anything really exotic here. This is just a wok thing that I bought at the store. And an old hot plate. <clears throat> um, the Babbitt that I'm going to use is all new Babbitt. Uh, I bought this from McMaster Car. And this is a couple years ago. This was $37 worth. Uh, I usually mix it, cut it a little with some other used Babbitt. This is uh, old Babbitt that I saved out of different things. And this is some unknown Babbitt. I don't know what in the world it was, but in something that's not too important like a line shaft or something, it would be fine. 
And then this is experimental. I haven't tried this yet, but this is this is cam bearing Babbitt out of engine cam bearings. Uh, you heat the bearings up and melt the Babbitt off them. It melts it a little bit higher temperature and it's very dense. It feels much heavier than this this does. So I'm not going to experiment with this engine. Uh, I'm going to use something that I've used before that I know is, is right. Uh, this Babbitt I got from uh, McMaster Car and uh, they've got two or three different grades. This is the low speed grade and uh, even their lowest grade is probably much much better than what was being used in 1895. <clears throat> so this is heating up and uh, I'll show you what we're doing uh, with the mold in the meantime. Here's a little method you can use to tell if your Babbitt's any good or not. That's good stuff. I put a little too much in there. I really didn't want to get it above that because I got to remove that, but that's okay. I think that's a good fill. I'll try the other side. I have any trouble with sticking. 
Some people smoke it up with a settling, but I don't know, like all that. It's just floating around my shop. Lately I've been trying to heat the mold less and pour the babbit a little hotter. And I have, seems like I have less trouble with gas bubbles and things like that. I don't see anything running out anywhere. We'll let it cool down and check it. I took the putty off. You can use this stuff over a lot of times. You buy one box of it and you got enough to last you forever. The washer slid right out. And I didn't have any drips, I don't think. Just always nice. If I gotta do this over again, I'm gonna have to line the whole thing up anyway. So it doesn't really matter. I can see it. Looks like a pretty good pour. No matter how you figure it, there's a lot of hand work with Babbitt bearings. Uh, this one here I just did, and I had to clean the excess Babbitt down to this bottom of this lip here. And you do that with a chisel and a file and some time. Gotta be a little careful when you get over near the end that the end doesn't chip off. You 
just something that takes some patience and some time. Of course, you save all the chips and put them back in the Babbitt pop. If you get any dirt in there, it comes to the top and you take it off with a dross. Tin based Babbitt. It's what's for dinner. This is the top bearing cap, uh, and I've been heating it here a little bit. And it's set up with the same arbor um, and putty up here. Got just a little bit of Never See smeared around on this to kind of help it release. This is one of the main bearing caps set up in here in my little jig and uh, I've got it leveled this way and that way across there and that way when you're pouring it it'll be the same on both ends because I want it to come I want the babbit to come right to the top of that so we'll heat it up a little bit
This is about five minutes later. You don't have to wait a long time for it to cool down. Oh, look at that. Pull this off and see what we got. Wow. Got a void up here because a piece of putty, a piece of putty got in underneath the washer on the end. But I got to take so much out of here anyway, I think it'll be fine. The ends, the ends are pretty solid. Oh, that's something you don't think about.